topic is quiet quitting. We're going to have a lot of business leaders. I shouldn't say a lot, but several business leaders within the business world are go and I are going to have a conversation on Monday with what is leadership today. And the first topic that we have is quiet quitting. It's a buzzword in September. A lot of people know what it is. There's um, a lot of talks about it, but quiet quitting really is about doing the minimum requirement of one's job and not putting in the time, effort, or enthusiasm that's absolutely necessary for the job. It's kind of like neutral or below neutral, right? And what are signs of quiet quitting? So when you are a manager and you're a business leader, you're like, how do I look for those kinds of signs? When you see your employee always taking it out of the ballpark when it comes to performance and all of a sudden they're just meeting the minimum performance requirements, right? This is the most obvious sign that they're slowly quiet quitting on you. And you, you probably are going to ask, is this a bad thing or, or is this a good thing? It is both. It is a good thing for the employee that they're actually trying themselves to uh, do a work-life balance, right? But they just don't know how. And it is up to you as the business leaders to show them how so that they don't get stressed and burn out and literally quit on you, periods. Quiet quitting just means that they're still working for you, but they're not doing their their super best potential that they could do or not have the same oomph or enthusiasm that they used to have within your organization. Pew Research actually found the main reasons for quiet quitting in 2021. It included low pay, a lack of opportunities for advancement, feeling disrespected at work, uh, child care issues, obviously because of COVID-19, lack of flexible hours, and not having good benefits. Those are the main reasons why employees quite quit, okay? And I'll show you the link where that research came from. But according to the World Economic Forum, Quiet quitting is the art of not taking work too seriously, mostly used by the Gen Z workers who have helped the term go viral on TikTok, right? If you don't know what TikTok is and you are a business leader, you ought to go check it out. From Money News by Robin Madell, actually he wrote this. He says, a common sentiment behind the quiet quitting trend is that work-life balance. It's important overwork is overrated and unhealthy and work isn't the end all be all of a person's life. OK, so with that in mind, you're probably going to ask, well, OK, how do I deal with this as a, a business owner, as a business leader? How do I make sure my people don't quite quit on me? They're still working. They're still under my payroll, but they're not any more enthusiastic. Right. So as employers, how do we help them to find that work life balance so that they can perform at the optimal level for both themselves and for us, for our organizations and for our company? My suggestion would be promote work-life balance. How do we do that, right? Do you hear that buzzwords all the time? Provide a workshop or webinar on how to do work-life balance, how to turn off. An example would be encourage your employees to set boundaries, unplugged themselves from work when work is done, right? Don't take any check on the email. Don't take a phone call if it's work-related after your work hours important to set that boundary. So those are the first step that you could create maybe a, a micro learning of 15 minutes with your employees, right? Review your salary range with your competitors. Some, some employers that I've been uh, still have like the 1960s type of pricing for teachers. It's ridiculous, right? That's a whole lot of different story. But review your salary range within your competitors. Provide intrinsic rewards like monthly recognition, uh, bonuses, right, if you can afford it. Promote activities that are fun like team activities. How well before they start working? Just check in. How are you doing today? How's the kids, right? Review the work you are giving to your employees. Make sure that the deadline is reasonable. Don't say, oh, it was due yesterday. I want you to work on it today, however long, many hours that you want, right? We are not robots. We actually work best when we're motivated and we actually fit. We feel like we fit within that job description or um, <laughs> the expectation of the job description that you have when it's beyond that. And you're like, why am I doing this? I'm not even getting paid to do all this extra time, Right. Now, create a corporate wellness program. What does that mean? 
empower your employees to speak out what is bothering you, but make sure that it's anonymous so that they don't, they actually can tell you the truth. How do you do that? Provide a complaint box if you're physically meeting, right? Or go ahead and create a survey where they submit all the information anonymously. No one would know. But give them a voice, right? Give them a voice to tell you what is bothering them because you can't fix something you don't know what to fix, okay? Provide a hybrid approach if you must meet in person for the job, meaning you could do a four-day workday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, give them that, right? If it's a remote job, promote a get-together uh, type of activities once a month, once every quarter, however, so that they feel connected. And you're probably like, CJ, we're all over the United States. Okay, but you might have an employee who is in the same state or in the same city. They could even do a, you know, a meetups. People do it all the time. I know as a mom, I did meetups. Even if it was like downtown San Diego, I would go, right? Just so I could meet other moms and complain about my two month old and how they didn't make me go to sleep, right? It's that feel of connection that most employees need, especially after COVID. Encourage your employees to create their own micro environment with their passion, right? Outside of their work, what do they like to do? You ask your employee that, but you don't really like show that you're interested in what really they do outside of work, right? Like at work, I'm a teacher, but outside of work, I love skincare. I love makeup. I love volunteering. I love teaching at Michael's for DIY cutting machines. I love creating t-shirts, cups, you name it, right? That's what I'm passionate about. Create that space for your employees. Have a book club team. Have a chess team. Have a sports team, right? Softball team. Give them a small budget if you can, again, have to have the ability to get together and have fun right? Because 80% of our life is actually spent at work. So why not make it into a life that they can be proud of, right? To, to belong to an organization who cares about their whole entire self, not just the worker part, but the personal part that you're passionate about. So we're going to talk more about that on Monday. See you there 3.30 Pacific Standard Time on LinkedIn. Bye.